God has put it into my heart to be talking about how God wants to use you to bring increase into the kingdom of God for you to be blessed and fruitful in life. Welcome to the Worship Center in Bryan's Road, Maryland, where Jesus is saving lives, saving souls, and saving futures. Now here's Dr. Steve Davis with wisdom tips, life treats, and gold nuggets from God's Word. I just want to give a big shout out to all my Worship Center friends and families and all of our online folks that we don't always see in person and folks that are shut in and people that have just joined us because we want to get together and learn the principles of the Word of God to live overcoming anointed and blessed lives. And today, the Lord has put it in my heart to share with you a bit about how to get past your disappointment to that place of simple faith that really works. You know, we're in a time where there are so many disappointments, you know, whether it's the disappointments in government type things or the, the economy or your health or your career, you know, just not seeing any way forward. And, you know, sometimes we feel like we've been built up and expecting something awesome to happen. And then it never happens. You know, sometimes we thought it was God and we wondered what happened there. And I want to tell you, God will never, ever let you down. And I'm so glad to be able to talk to you about the Word of God and how it functions in your life. God has put it into my heart these days to be talking about how God wants to use you to bring increase into the kingdom of God. And we know that it's His will for you to be blessed and fruitful in life, to be able to enjoy being creative, highly productive, satisfied, influential, to be a difference maker, to be a person that brings blessing and honor, respect, and goodness into people's lives. And, you know, we talk a lot about John 10 and verse 10, where Jesus said that he came so that we might have life and have it more abundantly, to have more life, to have more juice in life, to have more powerful lives, more effective lives. And yet, for many people, they aren't experiencing that good move of God in their lives. They don't feel like they're being used by God. They don't feel like they're being led or directed by God. And I want to tell you that that's not the will of God for you <laughs> or for any other human being. So how do we enter into the place where these blessings of God, these promises of God, the purposes of God are being fulfilled into our lives? First of all, we need to know what God says. One source of disappointment, it's a major one because you and I are bombarded with information almost constantly, whether it's somebody tweeting or a new Instagram post we're getting a notification about or a news feed or, you know, something that's happening on television, you know, or Facebook or any other kind of social media. You know, we're getting just bombarded with information constantly. And what happens is, you know, we can be getting that, you know, and imagine that we're getting all of this independent information. You know, I hear that so much more recently, you know, people saying, well, you know, well, I get my news or information from independent sources. I do my own research and all of that. You know, that's great. However, for the believer in particular, one source of disappointment is getting our information from every source except the Word of God. We have to know what God has promised. His promises, more than 7,000 of them are in the Bible. And if you don't know what they are, how can you believe them? How can you pray for them? How can you receive them? How can you know what he says to do or what instructions he has for you to be able to receive them? And like God says in Romans 10 and verse 14, how then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a, procle a proclaimer, a preacher, a speaker, a communicator? In other words, if you haven't heard the word of God and you haven't read it, you can't believe it. Now, for me, I never knew about the promises of God until I heard them from my preacher, from my pastor. I'd been raised in a church, but I'd never heard the Word of God. I heard all kinds of other things. 
And sure, the preacher had a Bible there, and there was a lot of uh, singing and things like that, you know. And because there was there were songs that talked about the Lord, and it was a generally spiritual atmosphere, and there were some prayers, a little bit of worship, I imagined that what I was being taught was the Word of God. However, I found out when I really needed the Word of God that I didn't know it. I'd learned philosophy, I'd learned some sociology, I'd learned psychology, I'd learned politics, but I'd never learned the promises of the Word of God. And when I got in this church to preach the gospel, he didn't preach all of those other things. He didn't teach me psychology, he didn't teach me politics, he taught me the promises the Word of God, and that completely, totally changed my life. See, God's blessings come on you by believing in your heart what He says, what He says, first of all. You hear what He says, you read your Bible and find out what He says, you let it into your heart, your spirit being you think on it, you meditate it, you internalize it. You begin to make those thoughts your thoughts and those ways your ways. You begin speaking it or it begins to be conversational with you. You begin saying what God says is true and then that directs your actions. You begin to follow up with actions. And that's where the problem comes in for many people, many Christian people. You know, they may be involved in a church and, you know, there might be incredible music and a great worship band, perhaps, and, you know, some really gifted speakers and all kinds of fascinating topics and even some Bible verses. You know, most Christians don't have any problem with hearing Bible verses and many don't have any problem with actually reading the Word of God. But the problem is our natural mind doesn't want to believe it. Mine doesn't either. Your flesh, my flesh, doesn't want to believe what God says in his word. Our flesh wants to doubt. Our flesh wants to be in unbelief. And it's because God's word is spiritual and our flesh is carnal. God reminds us in 1 Corinthians 2 and verse 14, he says, but the natural man, the natural man, our natural mind, 1 Corinthians 2, verse 14, the natural man receives not the things of the Spirit of God, the natural mind, for they are foolishness to our natural mind. And it says, neither can our natural man, our natural mind even know them or experience them because they are spiritually discerned. This is food for our spirit. The natural person does not receive the things of the Spirit of God. Your flesh, my flesh doesn't receive them, but here's the key. Your spirit does. Your spirit feeds on the things of God. That's a key thing to know. You know, when you start reading your Bible, your flesh tries to get you to do anything else, anything but get God's Word into your spirit. Your flesh just doesn't like it. And I'm telling you, even if you're reading and you feel like you're not getting anything out of it. I mean, listen, I can read this at times, and no matter how exciting it is, I confess, I can read this, and sometimes it feels like my eyes are just bouncing off the pages and just bouncing down the line there. But you know what? Whether my mind is benefiting or not, my spirit always is. This is spirit food. And when you start reading the word, or when you start praying, your flesh tries to get you to do anything else. <laughs> it might be the time you decide you need to go clean your bedroom. You know, you've been putting it off and putting it off. It's like, oh, I better clean my bedroom. I'm reading the word of God. Oh, I better clean my bedroom. Better go wash the car. Better go do the laundry. Let me put a load of laundry in. Anything. I better watch the news. Hey, I'm a Christian. I better know what's going on in this fallen world. I got to know about that right now. Hey, there's a movie on. I better check this movie. Oh, oh, I better check my social media. You know, I mean, and, and there's a sense. It's like, who cares what the people of a fallen world and fallen, fallen system are saying? 
And you say, are you trying to get me to just tune out? No, I'm not. Because the fact is, we're going to hear enough of that anyway. You can't get away from it. You know, we're going to hear the opinions of fallen humanity anyway. But we've got to be intentional about feeding our spirit man. Your spirit is crying for more, more, more of the word of God. Our spirits aren't crying for more possessions. They're not crying, you know, for more whatever whatever foolishness is going on in the world today. It's not crying out for that. It says, I want the word of God, that manna, that manna from heaven that feeds our spirit, makes us strong. When you start filling your heart with the word of God, things begin to happen differently for you. As you start believing good things, you'll start speaking good things. Instead of believing and speaking all the fear and hate and doubt that the world is hurling at you. You know, it's a crazy thing. It seems like, you know, the world never gets tired of feeding us scary stories. And we read scary stories and scary theories and all of this stuff. And then we scare ourselves with them and decide we better scare everybody else with them. And we can feed on that, but it hinders our spiritual walkers. Jesus said the, the, the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word and make it become unfruitful. But you know, when we begin to read and feed on the word of God, that leads us to begin to take action on the good things that we're believing that God is doing in our lives. You begin to believe that God is answering your prayers, that he's moving in your life, that he's taking action on your behalf and moving in our country and in our culture and in your family and in society as you're praying for it, instead of just cursing what's wrong with it. And when you start speaking that God is at work in your life and that the Holy Spirit is moving your life. And you begin to act on what he's doing, it begins to set into motion those forces of heaven that bring it to pass. And it's what you are believing and what you are speaking and acting on that sets the level of what begins to happen in your life. Even when troubles and struggles and disappointments come, God will still move on your behalf as your speaking and your heart and your thinking are lined up with the values of the kingdom of God. Believing, speaking, and acting on what God says is what happens before you begin to see them manifested in your life. We learn God's will. We learn, we learn the kinds of things that God will bless, the kinds of things that he wants us as shining lights in darkness, as ambassadors for the kingdom of God the kinds of words and actions he will bless. And there has to be words and actions. Faith without works is dead. Or believing but not taking action, that doesn't bring God's promises to life for you. And my job is to bring you God's word and to get you to believe it, get you to speak it, and get you to act on it so God's blessings can be released into your life through you and into other people's lives to bring significant and real godly change in our culture and in our country. King David testified in Psalm 116, verses 9 and 10. He said, I will walk before the Lord, or in God's presence, in the land of the living. Right now. You know, it's not like high in the sky in the sweet by and by when I die. He's no, now. Here in this life, I'm going to walk in the presence of the Lord. I'm going to walk. I'm going to live my life with the knowledge that God is witness of all I'm saying and doing. Listening to all my conversations and all things. I'm going to be his representative. And then he moves on here in verse 10, Psalm 116, verse 10, saying, I believed and therefore have I spoken. He said, I was greatly afflicted. And what happened? You know, maybe you have felt greatly afflicted. A lot of people are right now. 
There's a lot of heartache and disappointment and grief, fear that have been let loose in our society. What's the key? One, pull into the presence of God like David did. Say, I'm going to live my life. I'm not trying to impress my friends anymore. I'm not trying to impress my online associates anymore. I want to be walking in the presence of God. I want to please him. I don't want to believe what he says. I'm going to speak that. David knew that he would walk with the Lord now here in this life. And he believed it and he said so. He spoke what he was believing. Now, listen to 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13. It says, we having the same spirit of faith as what? As David. The same spirit of faith, 2 Corinthians 4, 13 says, we having the same spirit of faith, according as it's written, I have believed and therefore have I spoken. We also believe and therefore speak. I believe. Therefore, that's why I spoke. For example, the Bible says that you're blessed. And you might believe it, but you've got to get your mouth to speak it. It's hard to get your mouth to say it. I know that. You release it from being limited to the heart by speaking it with your mouth. And as long as your beliefs are just in your heart, they are very limited. But when you begin to speak them, they begin to be unlimited. Okay. Imagine yourself agreeing out loud. You can do this while I'm, I'm talking with Deuteronomy 28, saying, I'm blessed. I'm blessed if I'm in the city. You can say it. Go ahead. I'm blessed if I'm in the field. My body is blessed. My house is blessed. My goods are blessed. Whatever I touch is blessed. I am fruitful. I am productive. And I am blessed. That sets you apart from most of humanity. Because most people don't talk like that. Most people talk more about what they don't want. What they're not happy with. You know, say, hey, you know what I don't like about you? You know what I don't like about this restaurant? You know what I don't like about whatever? You know, and they're just constantly with things like that or things like, well, you know, with my luck. Then they add some lousy ending. You know, they talk about what they're afraid of. They talk about what they're dreading. They talk about what they disagree with. They talk about what they don't want to happen. I'm trying to make this really easy. Okay, how about this? Can you imagine going to a restaurant and when the server hands you the menu, you begin, instead of looking at the menu, just have it sitting there and you begin to tell the server all the foods you don't like. You know, you're like, hey, you're like, uh, you know, I don't like um, uh, Brussels sprouts with chocolate sauce on them. I don't like oysters and cornflakes together. You know, and you, and you go on with all the stuff you don't like. And then when the server says, oh, we don't serve those things here. What is it that you want? And then you begin to think of some more things you don't like. Say, oh, you know, I really don't like uh, sardine milkshakes. Oh, that'd be terrible. Oh, a chocolate milkshake with sardines in it. Please don't bring that out to me. No, no, that would be terrible. It would make me sick of my stomach. I mean, you don't do that. That's why I'm bringing that out so ridiculous. You know the things that you like. So you take that menu, you read it, you look at it, you look at the pictures, and you begin to even maybe get ideas for food that you had never even thought about until looking at the menu. That happens to me a lot. I can go in and I don't even know what I want. I flip through and I say, man, that looks good. I want to have one of those right there. You know, I was with this guy one time, great big fella. You know, he's looking, he's, I'll take page three. <laughs> he just liked it all. He was joking. But you know, when you're looking in the Word of God, that's where it needs to be. You know, that menu fires your desires on purpose. And when you look into God's menu, the Bible, it begins to give you inspired ideas, possibilities, hopes, and dreams, and desires that you never even thought existed. Whereas the Bible says beyond what we could ask or even think about. And that's why Jesus tells us, to pray for the things that we desire, not the things we don't want. So many people's prayer life is a complaint list of to God, of God, don't let this happen, don't let that happen. Oh, God, I don't want this. Oh, stop those people, God. He says, no, pray for what you desire. What we need to pray is what God gives us 
faith for, according to the Bible. Think about what God says about his word in Isaiah 55, verses 10 and 11. He says, in the same way that the rain comes down from heaven, it waters the earth and makes it bring forth, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater, my word shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I send it. God says, my word is like rain that produces results. Rain that causes that seed to sprout. That causes that tender plant to grow. There's the seed, then there's just a little sprout, and then there's the blade, as Jesus said, the kingdom of God is like. And then the full corn or grain of wheat in the plant. He said, that's the way it is. Don't despise the day of small beginnings. When you bring the word of God into your life, into your thoughts, into your heart, it brings you the results that God intended. It enables you to be fruitful, created, blessed, and productive. In 1 Peter 1, verse 23, God says that we are born again by the incorruptible seed of the word of God. And we know what this word will do. It will bring forth fruit. It will provide seed for you to plant and bread for you to eat. God said it prospers. It does well. It succeeds at what it's sent to. And since you're born of that seed and that seed is in you, you can begin to know what you can expect to happen in your life as it works through you. Imagine, you have the seed of the word of God inside of you. That seed, that word of God inside you is programmed to prosper, to grow, to bring forth, to change the landscape of your life, to flourish, to bring forth a harvest. You're not a loser. You're in the family of God Almighty. You're an overcomer. You're a conqueror, the Bible says. No, more than a conqueror. Through him that loved us. That's Romans 8, verse 37. It says in all these things, Romans 8, 37, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Say, I am more than a conqueror through him that loved me. What a thing it is to say the word of God. We need to see what God's word says to us. We need to act on it and then start getting God's planned results, manifesting, breaking forth in our lives. Too many people don't know what to do with their lives. They want to know how to handle this kind of problem, how to handle that kind of problem. And they think of themselves as failures instead of thinking of themselves the way God thinks of them. They read everything but the Bible. They listen to every voice except the word of God. They follow every leading except the leading of the Holy Spirit. And that's why they're not getting the answers that God has already provided for them. We've got to stop just hearing the word of God. Because to be in God's will is to hear it and practice it. To act on it. To hear it and do it. And God's word in your life is programmed designed to prosper you and to produce fruit in you as you believe it, speak on it, and act on it. It's a matter of making a decision, of choosing to not be some kind of panty waist spectator Christian who's just sitting on the side eating their dumb carnal popcorn and watching life go by. Christ has redeemed you from the curse of the law, and when the curse is broken, the blessings of God begin to be released. Jesus purchased your freedom. He freed you from the curse so you can walk in God's favor and in God's provision. And when you begin to act on this word, God begins to change the landscape of your life. Instead of thorns or things that keep you out coming up in your life, God will bring in the things that you can use to build with. You know, those forces of darkness do everything they can to rob God's people of Bible faith and to get us distracted after every other kind of movement, every other kind of thing we can spend our time and energy and influence on except the kingdom of God. The enemy wants you to get involved with anything else and receive anything else other than what God provided for us. 
And God has shown me that he is moving in the lives of the people who are hiding this word in their hearts and believing it and acting on it. He's rebuking the powers of darkness and he's releasing blessing, deliverance, help, healing, and favor into people's lives. And he's doing that in your life as you yield to him and as you let him work in you mightily. I want you to know that I'm praying for you and I'm asking God's richest blessings in your life and for you to be transformed, transformed into a difference maker, a kingdom of God, good news spreader, a person who is contagious with the gospel of Jesus Christ and all of the things that God wants to do here in the earth among humanity. And now you will be used wisely and that you will be blessed and used mightily by God. Thank you for spending this time with me. I truly appreciate it. We hope you were blessed, inspired, and challenged by what you heard today. And we pray that God spoke some inspired truths into your heart. This ministry is supported by your gifts and donations. If you'd like to help us spread the good news, you can give at our website, www.theworshipcenter.org, or you can text to give at 301-637-0777. It's easy and takes only seconds to set up. Thank you for listening and God bless you and your family. <laughs>